This blue whale has a hundred quadrillion cells, and that's about a thousand times more than you and I do, and yet it doesn't get cancer. Now this makes no sense since this behemoth of an animal should get cancer at a way faster rate than we do. And it's not only blue whales, it seems as though all large animals seem to get cancer at a much lower rate than is expected based on their size. And this is known as Pieto's Paradox, first discovered by a chap named Richard Pieto. Kind of an unfortunate name. So first of all, what even causes cancer? Well, there's a number of things. This. 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 But one thing that's unavoidable is aging. See, as we spend more time on this floating rock, our cells divide more, and each time a cell divides, it has to copy 6 billion base pairs of DNA. But such a big number will inevitably cause mistakes, so mutations are bound to occur. And as cells keep dividing, these mutations accumulate to a point where a cell will start to act differently than it was supposed to, specifically among genes that control cell replication. See, once a cell starts dividing when it's not supposed to, tumors will start to grow. And alongside the mutations that come from cell replications, there are also the mutations that come from everyday stresses that our cells deal with, like this, 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 to the point where eventually a cell will start to malfunction and act differently than it was programmed to. The older you are, the more likely it is that you don't work the way that you used to. And that's why it makes sense that the more cells you have, the more likely it is for you to get cancer. The higher the number of cells, the more likely it is that something goes wrong. And this is even seen within species. The risk for cancer increases at a rate that correlates to height and size. So believe it or not, a taller person actually gets cancer at a higher rate than a shorter person. And this is true across many species, ranging from mice, to flies, to elephants, to dogs. However, this all goes away when we start to compare between species. Compared to mice, we live about 50 times longer and have about a thousand times more cells. Yet, they get cancer at the same rate that we do. Similarly, elephants have about a hundred times more cells than we do, but they also get cancer at the same rate that we do. What's even more crazy are blue whales, which are the biggest animals of them all. They have about a thousand times more cells than we do, and they don't seem to get cancer at all. In fact, cancer rates across all animals only varies by twofold. And keep in mind that the ages vary by over a thousandfold, and their sizes vary up to over a millionfold. So to see how animals do this, we'd have to go back billions of years. As multicellular life began, so did the stresses of increased cancer rates. So as animals became larger and larger over the course of eons, they evolved to be able to suppress cancer better. So how did they do this? Well, as I mentioned previously, cancer is caused by mutations that occur in our DNA. But our cells actually have some ways of fighting this. One way is through a tumor suppressor gene known as P53. And this causes our cells to repair damaged DNA or go through apoptosis, which is self-destruction. While humans only contain one P53 gene, the African savanna elephant contains 20 copies of this gene. And this is why it's way less likely for this elephant to get cancer than your mother, despite them being the same size. Similarly, mice have one P53 gene just like us, but it's much less effective. In fact, genetically engineering mice to have more P53 genes will cause them to fight cancer better. However, this isn't the only way that large animals fight cancer, as whales don't seem to have this P53 gene at all. It seems that slower metabolisms in animals can actually be beneficial. Proteins that are very reactive with oxygen seem to cause cancer, as these reactions damage DNA. However, these reactive oxygen agents are predominantly seen in animals with fast metabolisms. And as you might have already guessed, the smaller an animal, the faster its metabolism. So you always complain about having a slow metabolism, but now I got this ace up my sleeve. I won't be dying of cancer, baby. Instead, I'll be dying of heart disease. Another predominating theory is hypertumors, in which tumors of large animals get large enough that they develop tumors of their own, which in turn kills the original cancer. Kind of ironic. Sadly, research of Pito's paradox is still in its infancy, so we're not too sure about many of these mechanisms and can only theorize. Many species of large animals have evolved separately, and each of these species have mechanisms for fighting cancer. So there can be thousands, if not millions, of different ways that animals fight cancer. So that being said, we have a lot to look forward to, as understanding Pito's paradox may be our gateway into curing cancer. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.